Hello and welcome to a special episode of the Weekly Scroll Podcast. We're interviewing a very special guest today. That is Levi Combs of Planet X Games. How are you doing today, Levi? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. I'm not not too bad. You know, we we say that is we haven't been talking for thirty minutes, but uh, but we're here and we're actually on the pod now, so it's good. So um, so for for those that may not know who Levi Combs is or Planet X Games, what's uh. What's your what what's your, what's your human pitch like? What what is what is who who is Levi Combs? Well, that would be just about everyone. So uh, yeah, that that's the life of an indie game designer, and that's okay. Um, I am the um, the publisher and owner of Planet X Games, uh, creative head. I I write some of the some of the material. Um, I'm an old school gamer from back in the '80s. You know, I came up on on the uh, you know Dungeons and Dragons and. Uh, cyberpunk and champions all these you know kind of older uh games that gestated out of the 70s and 80s and um i'm a dad i'm a son i'm a, a husband just a kind of i'm an odd fellow i'm a just a weird dude i'm old school monster kid from back in the day you know i grew up on a steady diet of saturday morning cartoons and star wars so uh probably a lot like most people most guys my age at least for you know i um that's that's pretty much the DNA of who I am right there. Yeah, I mean, I, we were just talking about this right before we started. I, I I missed I missed a lot of that early early TTRPG stuff, and every time I have, you know, someone like you on that like just talked about it, and their eyes just like go bright about it and stuff. I just I I wish I would have got into it when I was younger, but alas, here we are. Um, so, uh, so you said you, you, you started, um, you, you published Planet X games and obviously write for that as well. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about Planet X? Like what, why Planet X? Like how did, when, when did that come about in your TTRPG <laughs> lifestyle, you know? Um, okay. Well, so about six years ago, um, I was just, I, I wanted to get a module published, you know, I was trying to get my foot in the door. I had some ideas, you know, all the, all the normal stuff. Um, and I knew one guy, I knew one guy in the, in the, they, they, people call it the industry, but I, it's the hobby to me, you know, we're not really an industry, but, um, I knew one guy in the hobby, one guy who was professional and that was Casey Christopherson. He worked for, uh, Necromancer games and did some stuff for frog God games. And, um, so I, I went to him for advice. like, how do I get my foot in the door? And he's like, well, Hey, let me, I really like your module. Let me pitch it to, to my bosses. And he did. And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll publish it. We'll buy it. But it's like. We're going to take this, this, and this out. And that, that, this, this, and this, that's what I thought made it special. I was like, ah, I'm going to pass. You know, I'll, I'd rather sit on it than see it get, you know, you don't, you know, see your, your baby get gutted, you know? <laughs> so, right. um, so after that happened, I was obviously, I was kind of like, you know, kind of down about it. And Casey said, well, hey, man, why don't you just publish it yourself? Like, I'll show you how to, you know, do XYZ uh, and you can go to Kickstarter. And I said, what is Kickstarter? So I had no idea what Kickstarter was or crowdfunding even existed at all. So he walked me through the steps. He held my hand. He introduced me to some folks who gave me some really great advice early on. Guys like Jeff Claney and Matt Finch. These guys all like took my cold call, you know, in the middle of the day, not knowing who I was, only that I was Casey's friend and gave me super, super solid, good advice um, that probably kept me from living in my car in the Taco Bell parking lot, you know, not messing up my Kickstarter, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I ran my first Kickstarter and really once I realized like I could get these things funded, it was kind of off to the races. Nice. And then, and then that's, everything just came from there. You just decided Planet X right at that time. Did you decide, okay, I got to give a name to this thing that I'm doing or. Oh, no, the, the Planet X stuff, uh, goes back a, just a little bit farther. Um, so online I had, <clears throat> I'd had some stuff. Uh, I had an Instagram page. It, it came from beyond planet X where I would just like, literally like, like, um, like a thought feed. You know, if I was thinking about Battlestar Galactica one minute, I'd post some Battlestar Galactica stuff. The next minute could be Adrian Barbo from swamp thing Then it might dot dovetail into like Dracula for like six posts. And then, Oh, Hey, I'm over here talking about TSR belt buckles from like 79. Like it, it, there's no telling where it would go. But I think that weird stream of thought, uh, that you know, crazy, just consciousness to the to the screen sort of approach, it just appealed to some people, and it was very nostalgic. Um, and we started talking about, yeah, you know, I started talking about movies and and comics, and um, so the Instagram page caught on, and then I'm, it was Twitter and you know, as other social media, 
<clears throat> and then when it came time to do the module, it was like, well, let me just call it Planet X Games because, you know, it all kind of ties in together. Uh, there's no like real like super huge significance to it. Like there's no planet 10 out there or like some unknown planet or conspiracy theory that, that hey, I'm, hey, um, listen, there could be, we don't know. Right. No, no, I get asked that question a lot, actually. Like, you know, I've had people approach me and be like, all right, so tell me about Nibiru, the planet beyond the, you know, I'm, I'm like, Whoa, whoa hold on. <laughs> like, I'm, uh, you know, it's great for you, but I had no idea what you're talking about. Um, no, but um, yeah, it's, so it all just kind of wrapped up and I had tons of ideas because I've been writing stuff in notebooks for 20 years, you know, and scribbling mm -hmm. down ideas and of course running games and playing in games. So um, it was a very easy leap from just being like pop culture monster kid to making games. There you go. And then you just kind of went off to the races, like you said. I mean, so I have a couple here and a couple more that are in piles all over the place but um for a little bit of a, a spread here the phylactery omnibus which is absolutely fantastic this is all four of the uh other phylacteries plus a little bit extra if i'm if i'm not mistaken and oh, yeah. then we got um king tut's rootin tootin weird west uh extrava bonanza right <laughs> and western and, wear yeah uh, <laughs> and then magic and shit so a little bit of a, a variety of stuff uh, you got going on. Um, and it all kind of leans into, for the most part, um, either the OSR space or whatever some people are calling like the newer OSR space or whatever. But the majority sure. of your content outside, it looks like maybe some some 5e stuff um, really lends itself to what you were saying, some of the, the early games and stuff. Is that... I mean, that's clearly, obviously, the choice. Is that where your your focus has primarily been, or do you feel like there's been a, more of a spread with it? Oh, no, for sure. Um, so I started off doing 5e products because um, I was playing 5e at the time. I was interested in, in, in 5th edition stuff. Um, but gradually, as I became disengaged with uh, uh, with 5e and, um, and just not really playing it very much anymore... I, I stopped making 5e products because I I want to make stuff that I want to play. And I, I really think that speaks to um, the genuineness of, of, of stuff that, that uh, folks like me do. If you, you know, if you're a small time indie publisher like me and you're putting out weird projects, it's probably because this is the stuff that you want to see. Yeah. Um, you know, rather than the you know, stuff that you want to play, like you want to come to a table and, and you, these are the things you want to experience um, rather than you're just trying to make a dollar. Cause if you're trying to make a quick, any publisher in RPG, you should probably go find another job. Um, <laughs> almost everyone I know that does it does it because they just love role playing games. Yeah, that's that's why they do it. So, um, as far as like the breadth of the stuff that I do, like yeah, a lot of it exists in the OSR space, uh, primarily because you know you've got Swords and Wizardry, you've got Osric, you've got Dungeon Crawl Classics, First Edition, Second Edition. Uh, you know, you've got all these retro clones in between, in, you know, in between that, um, even like BX retro clones that just that dovetail into it really, really nicely. So you say it's for OSR, you know, or you say, oh, it's just for old school role playing games or old school renaissance, for, you know, however, a retro clone, it's just immediately available to a huge audience. You know, a lot of people can play, they can pick it, pick it up and go, oh, I don't have to really fudge much here i don't have to change many things or convert i can just pick this up and use it i think that's um very valuable yeah i mean absolutely that's why you know that's why we here on the show really dig into a lot of the the osr space and a lot of things that are now like post osr or po whatever whatever the future people are going to call what we're doing now um but uh but that's exactly why so much of it is so easily adaptable you know there's so much in phylactery that you could in three seconds jump into like you said dcc or or snw or whatever you want because it all i don't know it feels like it has like the same dna you know at least at least in big yeah. swaths um so it, it makes it super approachable which is you know one of the things that i really enjoy about planet x and why i have like a bunch of the stuff um is it's just it's so um weird and fun and and usable which is really really great so well, if you um, think it's weird, that's a huge compliment to me because the idea, that's the whole idea. It's not, it's not fantasy. It's not even traditional fantasy. It's not even sword and sorcery. Really. I want it to be weird fantasy that hmm. kind of Michael Moorcock meets Roger Zelazny heavy metal, uh, the magazine, uh, heavy metal sort of quasi Richard Corbin. I, I kind of a strange, 
where it can exist in uh, in a lot of different spaces, but it's definitely its own strange, weird, bizarre thing. Is that is that what kind of pulls you towards DCC? Because I feel like of all of the ones that we're talking about, I feel like that's the one that you can kind of get the most weird and it feels right in as opposed to something like sword and wizard or stuff where it feels like the vibe is maybe just a little bit more narrow is that is that why dcc is kind of something that that you're pulled towards with some of your modules and stuff yeah no for sure like and, and dcc has a really like it's a good space to just create and explore weird ideas like um like i just ran um, a module for a bunch of really experienced dcc players and um one of, so one of the characters, he, he died in the first session, but in the second session, we were like, well, do we have a new character or how do we bring him in? And he um, he just had the old character. Um, he had like fungus grew from the old character and turned into the new character. Like that's how he explained them, you know, because of the weird chaos magic and the, the odd sort of mercurial effects that come from magic. It was real easy from just saying, oh, yeah, that's that's what happened. And it's cool. Like he didn't just, oh, hey guys, I'm late to the party, or um, oh, I'm sorry, we we you know, got lost in the jungle. It wasn't it wasn't anything like that. It was like this really cool visual style, and it just kind of helps with immersiveness and uh, making um, the weird palatable to, mm -hmm. uh, to to actual gameplay. It's just little things like that, and so I was really impressed by 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 that that uh that explanation. So and that speaks directly to DCC, you know. DCC is just one of those, um, we, like we were talking before the show started, you know, it feels like 1983 again. I'm popping open the red box and I'm like, I don't know what anything anything does. I don't know what any of these monsters do or any of these magic items do. That's how I feel almost every time I play DCC. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And and like we said before, that's a game that um, uh, we've been meaning to review uh, because, you know, a mutual friend of ours loves it a whole lot. A, a lot, a lot. Um, and we'll get to it eventually. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but, uh, but yeah, listen, it, I, I love um, that a lot of, you know, we talked about 5e, and I'm not going to dig into 5e too hard. Um, but a lot sure. of modules are doing 5e and DCC or 5e and OSC. And that's a really, really great thing to see. I, I wish... Um, a lot of people would steer more towards DCC or OSC versus 5e. And, and and when you put out modules as great as the stuff that you put out that people can approach in both, that's really nice to see that, you know, if they do see the 5e module, they may go, hmm, that DCC cover is nice, though. Like, I could I could snag that one, you know? Well, I can, I can honestly say that if um, I had been playing DCC when I released my first modules, I would have just made DCC modules. Um, if that had been, it, but I hadn't quite entered that zeitgeist yet. I, I played one, I think it, when I released Jungle Tomb of the Mummy Bride five years ago, I had played a game of VCC and that was over, um, it was, I think, I want to say it was over, not Zoom, but like over like a, a kind of a FaceTime kind of thing. Um, yeah, it just wasn't in my zeitgeist. I was like, oh, this is cool, but like, I wasn't playing it all the time. But now that I, I am kind of immersed into it, like so much more fun for me. Yeah, I and, you know, I, I said 5e was unfortunately I, I was very late to tabletop role playing games. I started in, I guess, about fuck, almost 10 years ago now with the 5e box set. And um, God, I wish I would have got into games sooner and a different game to start first with. And, uh, you know, but I'm glad that we have this now. We have this here. It's interesting, you know, because even five years ago, the space wasn't nearly as big as it is now. You know, when you get things like you know, like Planet X, like Exalted, like all these other places that are really pushing these these games and OSC blowing up and things like that. I feel like we have entered, you know, what feels like, even though I missed the first one, like a, like a, a second or third or fourth, I don't know, like a golden age of tabletop games now, you know, partially because nerd culture is acceptable in the mainstream, not like it was previously. But um, it's really fantastic to be able to have... You know, someone like you, someone like Planet X, you're putting out a lot of this content for numerous systems, but like for stuff that I missed and now I get to experience all over again. So it's it's really great to see such such um, such good content. So thanks. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, I don't I don't have a system of my own. I'm not you know, I, I'm not trying to hawk a, uh, or promote a system of, of my own, at least not yet. Um, there is one in the works. But um, that's some 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 time off. But I want to support the systems that I enjoy. Like that's why you see mm -hmm. like um, I'm doing more DCC DCC stuff now. I'm doing more OSC stuff now. I just uh, in fact I just did a, a book for Exalted Funeral that was uh, OSC, and I've got modules for OSC planned out um, all through like the next two years. So 
there's a lot of stuff coming and none of it is 5e <laughs> it's hey, all either listen. dcc osc or some sort of retro clone um and, and I've, I've got a weird frontiers adventure coming too just because i love playing weird frontiers it's such a cool cool game i really like uh dave the uh, creator and all and the whole community around weird frontiers so i was like you know what i should write a i should write a um I should write an adventure for that. I already kind of did with uh, the uh, the King Tut's Root and Tootin, um, Weird West Extrava Bonanza. That is, yeah, that's a thousand percent inspired by um, Weird Frontiers. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is weird. I'll tell you that. I I um I don't even remember what the first Planet X thing I saw was. Um, but you know, as soon as as soon as you see something from it, you're just like, man. Like I might have, I don't even know, but like magic and shit is such like a great, like is, is a great zine, but even just like the cover, like you got like the, the, the horns wizard on the front. It looks kind of spray painted. Like it's just so vibey. Like it's, it's very clear. Like you, you get a huge sense, you know, of who you are and what you're putting out just by the, the games that you're putting out by the content that's in it, by the systems that you're choosing and even by the art that's like on the, on the covers of the book. And it's just, it's, it's awesome. It's a, it's a great vibe. And, and that Instagram, I'll tell you what, I've never uh, followed some of the posts so much. It's nice to see the, the stream of consciousness come out throughout the day. Yeah. Like literally if I'm like driving down the road and I'm think I started thinking about, I don't know, like some movie I saw when I was a teenager and I'm like, Oh yeah. I wonder whatever happened to that movie. And then I pull over to the grocery store and I'm like in my car for 20 minutes, l- researching it, looking it up and posting pictures and talking about it. It's just, it really is a stream of consciousness. There's no telling what's whatever's going to be on there. It's um, yeah. You're, you're getting uh, like radio signals from my head. <laughs> just unfiltered just right onto it God, i struggle to post like once a week just to be like man i should probably tell people that we have a podcast episode out i just can't uh, i can't I, I just can't wrap my head around doing that much it's just not the way my brain works but it's nice to see it's really cool to see uh, when people are capable of doing that it's it's, it's fun it's really interesting to see um to see all the stuff um and now we, we've talked uh, um, about these projects coming out, um, all of these modules coming out. You do crowdfund um, your projects, or at least you have in the past. Um, are, are how how's that? How do you how is crowdfunding for a lot of like indie modules and stuff like that? Well, I mean, if you're not coming from a you know a place where you have a serious um, bankroll, you know, if you're just like a normal guy like me with like a family and job and you know the whole nine yards, then you know. If you want to make something cool, but you know you're not, you, you don't want it just to be the bare bones. Crowdfunding definitely helps. It's it's like it really is a, a nice step. And in my my day job is logistics. Like so, I have a pretty good handle on like like all right, well this is what I need. I have a plan. Let me time it out. You know yada yada yada. So I'm able to. Uh, that was kind of a, a step in my favor, I think, when I started because I was already organized, you know, and I already had the Instagram and the the the, the social media and stuff, um, not so much dialed in, but like I I I wasn't getting lost, you know, uh, trying to juggle it all. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so indie publishing, it's hit or miss. Like it, it's it's probably not going to be your only job. I mean, at least I hope not. Unless you're coming from like I said, deep pockets or you're sitting pretty already, like you know. It takes a minute to get there. I think if you want it to be um, be your only job, like I know guys who have made it their only job, and but you know they they started out having other jobs, and they eventually got to that got to that place. Um, it would be great if this was something that I was still doing, um, you know, when it comes time for retirement. That that would be wonderful when it's when it's time to take take a break or you know sit back on my laurels or whatever. Uh, I would love to keep, in fact, even do even more of this because I love it so much. Um, that's the plan that that would be that would be great but in the meantime like i'm just happy making cool stuff and working with my friends and meeting new people going to cons playing games running games and just kind of being in the food chain of everything you know um i'm not trying to be publisher number one i'm not competing with anyone which is something i always tell people like it's not a famine it's a feast there's a place for everyone at the table just you know you don't have to fight. Like nobody needs to fight over that uh, f- fight over that bone or that last scrap of meat. Just let's all be friendly to each other and help each other out. So, um, 
but yeah, life as an indie, indie, indie publisher is, is pretty sweet. <laughs> you get to make cool stuff for your friends and, and uh, hopefully it resonates with other people. And then how, so you're, I mean, I, I know you're not competing with anybody or whatever, but like, you're one of the guys, like you're one of like, you know, when we started this podcast, it's interesting because like people like when you're in like a niche, it's interesting to have like micro celebrities, you know what I mean? Or it's just like for yep. some people that are really into the scene, it's just like, that's so cool. But like so many other people are just like, all right, that's a person that's cool or whatever. Um, and here on the show, like we, we get that a lot where it's just like, you know, some, they're not a movie star, but to us, it's just like, ah, it's so cool to like talk to these people. And you're one of those people. It's really fantastic to talk to. And we were talking before the show starts, you're just like, oh yeah, I talk to like this guy all the time and that guy all the time. Like how, how does it, how is it in like the indie scene, like going to all the cons, knowing all the people, like running into Errol Otis or talking to, you know, Jeff or Brian and stuff like that. Like how, how does it feel like in the scene as like being one of like the, the kind of movers and shakers in it? Well, a couple of things. One, if, if there is a totem pole of celebrities, then I am on the very, very, I'm underneath hey. the ground brother. Cause let me tell you that that's, that doesn't resonate or like, that's not a, like part of my daily thing at all. Um, and as far as like being a mover and shaker, like, I, I don't really see myself that way either. Like I, I, I like to think I make cool content and sometimes it connects with people. If that's what you mean by that, then I will take it because uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, but you know, I, this is many uh, things that hit with people. That I have lots of stuff that misses too, you know? So like I, sometimes I'll write something and I'm like, ah, you know, what was I thinking? You know, like, <laughs> you know, that was great at the time, but you know, not so much now. Um, but going to cons is probably the like my favorite thing in this whole like thing to do because i get to run games for for new people i get to play in games with new people um i get to meet all the kind of all the people who are into the same thing that i'm into you know like we're all like uh like like say i run into the epic levels guys you know they're like so friendly and so nice like we're not just playing games together like we're just hanging out like we're just hanging out at the booth or Maybe we're going to it's like somebody else's late night game or we're going out for burgers or something later. Like it's a hang like and like just like hanging out with with folks makes it like a cool community sort of vibe. And it, it, it kind of reminds me of my bartending days, actually, because that was like I worked in dive bars. So it was always like a hang. That's what you were trying to like. That's the atmosphere you were trying to make was was a hang. You didn't like nobody was in there talking about, oh, my next project is, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I'm trying to make here's my Kickstarter metrics. No one cares about that. Like they're in these hangs. It's just dudes just hanging out and talking like, you know, just talking nonsense and having having a great time and being supportive and being like uh, communicative with each other and helping each other out and knocking down those those. it, you know, kind of, kind of those gates and, and doors that uh, are traditionally, you know, barred entry into the hobby in, in the past, you know, now that we're all helping each other out, like, you know, you might see me talking about this game, but then, you know, a couple months later, they, they might be talking about my game. So we're just helping get the word out and like making it a kind of more like a community event, like really, like, you know, cause that really is what, what gaming should be it's a community like i don't know about you but like it was always like about sitting around with my friends around the table and just as much time as we spent talking about what we were doing in the game we were talking about movies or comics or that tv show we were all watching or hey this happened last week so um again community and all about that hang man that's that's really what resonates with me so you do you go to a lot of cons? I know the world was in flux, you know, for, for a while and things are for a lot of people at least are attempting to get back to, to what it was before. Um, do you get to go to a lot of cons? And, and the, the real question is, do you actually get to play games a lot with like your friends and with people? Like, is that something you actually get to do? Um, yes. Uh, so I, I go to uh, roughly six or seven cons a year and I don't go to any of the great big ones. I don't, so like I don't go to like Gen Con, I don't go to Ori or Origins, I don't go to any of the the PAX um, cons that that aren't near me. There's one in Philly that I go to, but it's it's I'm, it's just as a as a I want to just walk around and talk to people, you know, and and I, I mean, it's really an excuse to, to hang with some of my friends, to be honest with you. Um, but um, oh, hey. come on, come on, sorry. Oh, that is uh, for for podcast land out there. That is the pupper. 
Yeah, sorry, my uh, I have a little tiny puppy, and she's she's very uh very aggressive. If anybody walks on the street out out, out front, she wants to protect us. Um. But when it comes to cons, like cons are definitely like as an indie, independent publisher, they're like probably like the number one thing that like helped me start to get the word out about um, the stuff that I was doing um, and meet new people and make connections, you know, um, especially like when it comes to like a collaborative project or you want to publish with somebody else or, hey, maybe you're going to publish something together or share artists or information, then going to cons was like invaluable for that. Like just, just meeting people, you know, face to face uh, and doing those sort of things. Now, when it comes to playing games, like I, I, I when I go to cons, I, I try to run as many games as I can, but I also want to play some. Cause like, what's the point if you don't get to actually, you know, play in a complete, and I usually end up playing in the games of, of people that I either admire or um, that are our friends previously. So um, i usually if I, if there's like a four day con, I'll play in like one game a day, you know, and then I'll run one or two. So nice. and then you do this time at the booth and the whole nine, you know, whole nine yards. So and that's another thing. Like I, I, I get a, because, because I run a booth with like six other dudes, like we're all shifting in and out. And, you know, some, some, sometimes these guys are running the booth. Sometimes I'm running it. So we all know about each other's product. We know how to explain it or sell it. Um, so it gives all of us a lot of leeway and freedom to not only run games, but the, the, the you know, but to play them as well. Nice. And do you do you actually get do you have a home game? Like, do you have like a, a continuous game that you get to play? So I did, um, but again, we, we just moved. Uh, we, we like we've only been here like I don't know eight months or something, and we're still not even unpacked. So like this, you know, it's a we were previously an Air Force family, so uh, there's just you know still boxes and, and totes of stuff everywhere, but. Um, there are some local game shops. I have stopped by and talked to folks. I've got some, I made some connections with people. So I'm, I'm hoping for that. Um, I do have a Friday night game that I, that I play in. It's a DCC game that I play there with, uh, Bob, Brink yeah, Bob Brinkman and, and, and his crew. So a lot of play testing, like right now we're play testing, uh, Caverns of Thracia, uh, okay. which is, is, is the DCC, uh, conversion of that. So that, that's just been awesome. And, um, I'm really lucky because Bob's a fantastic judge. Like he's just a, a great, fair and uh, super knowledgeable dude that uh, can describe things in a way that doesn't uh, give away the the mystery and, and wonder of things. So, yeah. Nice. nice. So, um, you know, talking about collabing on projects, like you just said, there's a project you have going on right now on Kickstarter. Yep. And, you know, there is, why well, don't, I'm not even gonna talk about it. What what do you got going on in Kickstarter right now? What uh what what is what is this project? Um, um there's a zine on, on Kickstarter right now called Closet of the Eye Wizard. Um and I wish I could take uh great credit for it, but I I really can't. This is really um the genesis and the uh the brainchild of uh, our mutual friend uh, Laz the Eye. Um he gathered together this fantastic I'm really a murderer's row of artists. Like we're talking like, you know, Peter Mullen, you know, Doug Kovacs, Chris Arneson, I mean, all these great guys. Um, uh, some of which are, are well known for their DCC work and some who are, are you know, not known for doing that kind of work. But regardless, the the, the list of that, that 16 um, artist list of like list of collaborators is just in incredible. But then on top of that, he went out and he basically picked 16 writers that he admired and matched them up, um, matched them up with a piece of art and said, Hey, uh, can you create something based around this art? So what, what you get when you get closet of the eye wizard, you're getting not just something that's like a, a resource for um, role-playing games or DCC specifically, you're getting half of that as like an art book, you know, you're getting an art zine. So every time that you open up a splash page, it is a representation of, of that artist and that writer collaborating. You're getting, you know, stats here, but you're also getting this, 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 you know, some pages might be black and white. Some pages might be double spread. Some pages might be color. You just don't know. Yeah, but every time you turn the page, you don't know what you're getting. And I, I find that really, really intriguing um, and just it, it kind of a cool approach to doing a, a, a zine. Yeah. I mean, it sounds crazy. When Laz was first talking to me about it, um, even just, uh, just, a just, a. a a splash of the names across it. You're like, I, uh, how could you not have this? LFOSR, Max Moon, Mustafa yeah. Bakir. I mean, 
uh, I mean, we even have like Gabrielle Caroga and stuff like that, who's like Hell Knight and uh, Warplan and mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, the the width and breadth of 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 the talent across the entire world is is insane, and I can't believe this many people are going to be in like one zine. It's awesome. yeah, I mean, that's another thing. It, it's a it's a global zine. Like you're getting people from uh, all really all over the world, but then you're getting people from all over the kind of. Uh, I don't know the, I don't know how you, the headspace of RPGs, like people who do all sorts of different uh, RPGs, you know, like you, you mentioned Gabriel and there's all you lazy lich and all, all these guys that, that, that are there from all, all do different things, you know um, you know, there's not a whole lot in common for like one page is, you know, Jim Wampler wrote it, but then the next page, like Brian Shutter wrote it. Those are two very different approaches to, you know, to, to writing. Um, so it's, it's just cool to see. I think it's a really cool idea and it really, really is um, a community project. It's kind of for the community by the community. You know what I mean? So that 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 really appealed to me. And what? So you said Laws really kind of you know put a ton of this together. What what um, did he come to you with with the idea for the project, or how did it actually get to get to get to real life and actually get out on Kickstarter and get ready to get going? Yeah. So um, we had communicated previously a, a couple years for a couple of years previous and he um he and i were going to do something for i believe it was knock magazine we were going to do like an article uh, about um a, he had a he had a um a map from uh alex gnarled monster I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with his last name but a gnarled monster a uh, beautiful map from alex and uh i wrote a dungeon around it but it was it was kind of the dungeon was kind of too long for for knock you know knock has that you know one and two page um, you know, every again, every 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 time you open it up, every every page you go to is different, and it just didn't kind of fit the format for Knock. And we kept reducing it, reducing it, reducing it. It just just didn't fit the format, unfortunately. It would have been it would have been a great article, but then I said, hey man, I I really like this. Uh, why don't we just why don't we put it in the factory? You know, I really I love this map. I love the idea behind it. I love the fact that it shines a little light on on Laws, who's a fantastic member of the community. Um, and it kind of furthers the whole <clears throat> mythos of the of the eye wizard himself, you know. Um, so we did. We ended up putting it into um, I think it was Phylactery Four, uh, and then uh, it was of course in the Phylactery Omnibus as well. Um, so that was just a great collaboration. Like he was very easy to work with. Um, you know, all the observations that he made about the writing or the art were just always spot on. Um, so I was just really happy to to collaborate with him and work with him. So then um, he says, "Hey, I've got this this all all these pieces of art, and I'd like you to write a piece based around this piece of art." And that it was the one that ended up being in Closet of the Eye Wizard. So I, I wrote up a a hat that was kind of like inspired by, um, uh, inspired by like Grindhouse films. And then like I was like, "What movie is all about the hats? Like, what you know? There's got to be some movies that are you know." So I, I landed on like the Blues Brothers. And um, the master of the flying guillotine, because those are both very, they have important hats in, you know, in, in those, in those movies. <laughs> so uh, I, I kind of merged the two concepts together, made a magical hat out of it, filled in some lore. And uh, yeah, I was just really happy with the way it came out. Um, and then after that, he was like, well, Hey, we should, you know, I, you, would you like to publish this? And I said, I would love to publish this. This is a really cool book. So um, yeah. So we got a cover from, uh, uh, Raphael, and that's another amazing piece of the book. If you if you look at the oh yeah the cover on that, um, but yeah, it just, it just all kind of gelled and it turned into a really really good collaboration. So um, I'm will be very proud to publish this. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous, and that that cover piece is absolutely fantastic. It's so like old school comic book. It's got such like a grit on it. It's just yeah. it's beginning to end. It looks pro- it looks fantastic. And for those for those listening who might not know who Laz is, if you first of all um, go to our YouTube and watch like the not one but two different unboxing specials we did um, for uh, their boxes, which you can see uh, here and here and here and uh, like three of them on the shelf behind me because I don't know. I probably I think I have like. 10 plus of them right at this point they do uh, amazing uh work for that you can get you know custom um but i've also been putting out boxes for for projects i have the um down we go box like right there so uh, amazing uh, member of the community like you said who's just so just lives and breathes ttrpgs and and really yeah. like just has their their finger on 
just I don't know the pulse of the entire like OSR scene and, and going back all the way to the beginning. But obviously, I mean, let's be honest, it's DCC. Like if they, if there is the biggest cheerleader for DCC out there, I'm, I'm positive it's Laws. So, um, but uh, <laughs> there's a great person, great part of the community, and it's really awesome to see them put this together and for and for you to put it out. So, and it is on Kickstarter right now, and you guys decided to do a pretty. It's a pretty short Kickstarter. It's only about two weeks, right? Yeah, it's, it was just two weeks, um, but that that isn't a, a, any kind of testimony to the the product itself. It really had, just has to fit in with the schedule of things, other things I have going on. So it was yeah. a matter of get, getting it in really before there's a Halloween project coming, another zine coming that's a Halloween um, themed zine. It's also a collaboration project with a bunch of uh, people you probably know. So um, <laughs> there's a, so it was just a matter of fitting that in uh, and making it timely. Um, but really, really cool things about it when, when I when, now that I'm talking about it is that it's already done. Like this is already put together. The PDF is already already here. So once those funds clear, people get immediately get the PDFs and it immediately goes to the printer. Like I've I've already got some. I've, I've, the, the printer that I use, I've, I've already got them to do the um, to do the proof, and it looks great. So it's God, uh, we're just in a really good space with it. It's it's timely. It's fun. It's. Uh, like I said, for the community, by the community, and I'm just very proud to publish it. Yeah, it looks it looks fantastic. I can't wait. And I I love when projects, you know, are ready to go and just need to get that money so they can put it out. I mean, I understand when people, you know, um, you know, you need the money first to to get some parts of the project. But I also I'll tell you right now, like every project that I have that's four years old is people that didn't really write it and are got stuck somehow. And, you know, so it's really nice when a project is done, is ready to go and, and you're able to put that out. Um, and that's, that's really neat. And, uh, and for, for those that may be on the fence or haven't looked at the Kickstarter page, like what can people actually get? I know that you said the PDF is done, but as far as actually, you know, what they can get, what, what can they get from the Kickstarter? Um, so it's, we, we kept it really, really simple. <clears throat> There's, um, only a couple stretch goals and they're really more like fun stretch goals more than they are like you know like serious stretch goals that will improve the overall size and compatibility you know nothing like that there's uh we just wanted to do fun stuff so uh, again because the project is is pretty much done um there's uh you can get the normal cover which is that beautiful cover by uh, by Raphael um and then there is a limited edition cover which is a cover that uh, that laws did that will only be available to kickstarter backers like you won't see it on exalted funeral you won't see i won't have copies of it at cons if you want a copy of it you need to get it on the on the kickstarter and it's just it, if you like his his previous work especially with the stuff of the boxes and um you know all, with all the stuff you see behind you <laughs> um yeah. if you like that sort of thing then the the uh, that other cover will will definitely appeal to you there's a, a retailer's uh, you know tier for that. There's a you know one a tier where you can get it all, you know, kind of the standard the standard thing. But um, that's for the for the main like zine. That's what it is. And then um, we have one stretch goal that's that's down. That's a that's a patron write up by Dieter Zimmerman uh, from Malhor the Mushroom God. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dieter's uh, writing, but he's super cool, super weird. He's got you know very DCC. Uh, super talented dude. Um, and then we have some uh, MP3 dungeon synth songs coming uh, from uh, from some other collaborators that are going to, it's going to be, you know, fantastic. Um, and you know what? Like we might just release those anyways. Who knows? Like it just depends on what everybody wants to do. Like I said, it's a collaboration. So I'll, I'll go with whatever those, whatever those guys want to, however they want to roll with it. So, um, but it's cheap, you know, it's like, it's, it's 20 bucks and you get a really cool, <laughs> You know, D and D book that's also I'm sorry, not a D and D, but RPG book that's also um, kind of an art zine as well. So, um, yeah. So I, I hope I hope that it appeals to folks and that they have as much fun checking it out and like in, enjoying it as we had creating it because it was a really fun project. Well, yeah, I mean, I can, I can only imagine. And and the cover from from Laws is great. Like it's so Laws. Like, it looks like. <laughs> It looks like the cardboard like boxes that he that he makes that like you know that are that are all around us and, yeah. and 
it looks absolutely as soon as i saw it i was like oh yeah that how could it have been anything else that's really great um plus your original cover so i mean of course i went for the one of everything because uh, how would you not want to have both covers um that's also what i do with all the kickstarters are back but it's fantastic and uh, you know this is one of those things i'll tell you right now like if you were listening and you're in the indie space at all you're into dcc you're into like pretty much anything in the scene you this is one thing you want to grab because i guarantee if you're just kind of in the scene a little bit give it six months and you're gonna have read or run stuff or seen art by pretty much everyone in this thing so you're gonna be like oh my gosh i'm so glad i got this this the bruno Baseco art from like you know this book over here that's also in the eye yeah. wizard book so like it's it just seems like such a really really fun cool project and like you said it's really inexpensive i mean for the pdf and, and two books including the special edition one is what like 37 bucks like that's that's crazy so it's it's I don't know. It's it's really fantastic, and it's funded, which is great. I mean, it'd be cool to hit. Uh, did you say there was it was the you, the MP3s you said were the the only stretch goal left that that is still trying to be worked on? Yeah, I mean, it, those are just cool like dungeon synth, you know, uh, music that I personally I'm I'm actually really looking forward to it <laughs> because you know I like I like playing stuff like that in the background while I run games. So um, that's that's the Cthul- that's so. that's Cthulhu again. So right, they're gonna be putting that out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, because I saw Max Moon. Uh, right. I don't think that's the name that we've mentioned before. Max, this entire shelf uh, from here over is pretty much dedicated to Max, one of the you know greatest people I know. I love them so much. And the Cthuligans has done some awesome stuff that they've done recently with Fairyland, with Demon Lord coming out. So having having more Cthuligan stuff is never a bad thing. So it'd be never really, really fantastic. Thing. Yeah, really, really, really cool to get that. So um gosh i hope i hope that goes there so you said it's a it's a short project it's only got about eight days left we're running this live um we're on i think it's what monday morning um so if you're listening to this um when does what day does the project actually end i believe it's oh it's yeah, september it, 5th it is, yeah next tuesday so next yes tuesday. Sep- september 5th that's right yeah so you got about a week to back this so if you're listening to this and it's before september 5th Go just go back to this project. Like just you're you're gonna want this. This is not a thing that you're gonna want to miss. It's 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 really neat. It's really fantastic, and it's awesome that you're doing this um, with uh, with laws and with the whole community. This it's I don't know. We need more projects like this. I think it, it, it's it's really fantastic. Yeah, I, and again, I just uh, I, I really need to speak to to the kind of like person that laws is and how he put all this together and. Um, you know, he just, he did a really good job. And I don't know that there's a lot of people um, in the, in the community that, that could have brought everybody together that way. You know, he, he basically wrangled 32 different artists and said, Hey, I want to pair you up this way. I want to do it this way. I'd like this. And then said, here's the freedom to go and do basically whatever you want, you know, like the, the, deliver it however you want it to look, write it however you want just you know here's a very small margin of guidelines you know um it needs to be dcc it needs hey it needs to be one page you know do 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 this um wait a minute then, wait a minute it's dcc i don't wait laws laws said it has to be dcc <laughs> are you sure i don't know if that sounds like him <laughs> but you know the way most of those are written though like yeah it's dcc but uh, you could go in there and with very little effort it could very quickly become you know, uh, two e- AD and D or swords and wizardry, or it could become Hyperborea very, very, with very little, you know, having to, having to convert anything pretty much on site. Like you look at it and go, okay, it does that. Yeah. You know? I mean, and that's, what's great about the whole, about all of the, whatever OSR, BX, retro clone, like the whole, the whole chunk of, of the scene right there is it's so, it's so easy to, to port stuff back and forth to the, the, the little, subgenre of that of that weird fantasy that you like so that's that's really fantastic um and so and aside from that planet x i know you talked about a couple of things you talked about some dcc modules coming out you talked about some osc modules coming out you talked about some halloween modules come out did you want to did you want to say did you want to talk about any of those is that anything that you want to talk about or, or are we just going to have to wait and see no i can i can buzz through some stuff briefly like i, I tend to plan out for a long time and i'm you know by the time you see something on kickstarter i've already been working on it for like a year you know, so like uh, the thing that we have coming up next after Closet of the Eye Wizard is uh, another very unusual project, and it is it's an, another community project, not quite to the extent that uh, that Closet of the Eye Wizard is, but it is basically me and my monster kid uh, RPG buddies, you know, getting together and, and making cool stuff. Uh, it's called uh, Reverend Werewolf's Old Timey Monster Mania Family Hour. 
and it's um, it's well over my typical 48 pages now. So it's probably more in this space of like 56 or you know 60 pages. Uh, but it's a zine, um, and it is directly influenced by like all the you know uh, issues of famous monsters of film land and Fangoria and all the old horror comics I used to read. And you throw you throw that in a like a like a tumbler like a dryer with like oh here's a couple issues of Ghost Rider and here's all those like watching uh, USA Up All Night or you know Joe Bob Briggs or any of the you know weird small town horror hosts that I that you know that I used to watch every every weekend just so I could catch like an episode of like the Twilight Zone or watch the Tingler or you know it was like oh hey here's some you know crazy um monster magazines from the 70s that were at the used bookstore it's kind of like a, an homage to all of that you know so it has a very retro feel to it um and a lot of the guys that have come on board to do uh to do articles and just make cool things for it are guys i just generally admire in in just in general you know like i just i like these guys um all around but they're also rpg creators that i, I follow their works so i buy all their stuff so uh, you've got uh, Joy Royale from Joy's Pizza Party. He 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 does the fab, fabulous uh, uh, Weird Heroes of Public Access, which is probably the best game that I've played in I don't know five or ten years. It's really really good. It's right to me. It's 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 right up there with the like Weird Frontiers. It's you know it's 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 a, a great system. He does Ninja City. Uh, he did One of Us. It is it's a fabulous creator. Uh, Brian Shutter from uh, Neon Lords of the Toxic Wastelands. We've talked about him before the show. Like he's a, a, another great creator, making some super cool, unique, but yet still nostalgic stuff. Um, uh, John McGuire from uh, Three Two One Action, uh, Hambone from the Vintage uh, RPG podcast. He came on and did some really really cool stuff. Um, uh, there's uh, Andrew Hind is uh, just a, a buddy of mine. He, he, you know, he worked back in the early days of like uh, the sword and sorcery and like uh, third party publishing, but he's just been writing his own books ever since. And he, he writes a lot of uh, like um, books about like ghost towns and supernatural events and things like that. So um, he was for the stuff that he worked on in, in the, in the zine, he was like the perfect dude to do that. Um and then my uh, my best friend since fifth grade, uh, Lawrence Hernandez. He's done a, a ton of um, stuff for Planet X in the past. He did some writing and he did some art. Like if you've ever opened up an issue of the Phylactery and you see those um, Save versus Disbelief comics in the back, mm -hmm. uh, he's the guy who, who 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 did that. Which is obviously kind of a riff on uh, the old, uh, you know, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. So, but you know, RPG based. So he did. Uh, He's a, he did some work on this as well. And just a, a, a couple other creators who've, who've kind of dipped in with like little minor things and they worked on it. And it's all being like uh, wrapped up by um, uh, our, our, my friend uh, Cheese Hasselberger, um, who he's the guy who laid out uh, and drew most of the illustrations for Three Curses for Sister Saren. Uh, he did some of the art uh, in um, the King Tut's Root and Tootin. Uh, Weird West Extrava Bananza zine that, that we were talking about earlier. Uh, but he's done a bunch of stuff for, you know, for Phylactery and for uh, some, some other stuff. But he's a fantastic uh, independent artist, cartoonist, and graphic designer. He's been in the game for like 20 plus years. He's just a crazy talented dude. But um, yeah, I'm already going way, way long on that. So, uh, but yeah, that's it, it's going to be a, a killer, killer zine. The, the, the preview that I got on the, I got on the cover. Uh, not quite done yet. But the preview I got, like when I got it, just blew my mind. Like I was like, I was looking at a Basil Gogos cover for like a seventy-two issue of uh, you know Famous Monsters. So very very cool. That's awesome. Is, is that is that coming to crowdfunding? Yeah, that'll be on Kickstarter probably like mid September, late September, on through early early October. Um, so right around the and corner. Then after yeah, yeah. After that, we're taking a break for a couple months, uh, just to catching up on, make sure everybody gets all their stuff and everything's all our attention's kind of pointed towards that. And then we're going to hit with some DCC modules, an OSC module, and then for uh, for Zine Quest next year, we're doing issue five of the Phylactery. So uh, that'll be a nice, big, fat, like double stuffed issue of the Phylactery for nice. Zine Quest. Just keep. I mean, are we are we gonna get like twenty plus issues? Are we gonna do Flactory until we retire? Is that is that what we're doing? 
I will continue doing them as long as I enjoy doing them, you know? And that's I really awesome. think that's, again, that's the, that's the, that's the secret ingredient like to making RPGs is if you enjoy it and it's genuine, then it'll come across as genuine and people will enjoy it or have it, or have the opportunity to enjoy it the same way that you do or in their own space. But if you're just trying to make something for money, people will sniff that yeah. out in a heartbeat, man. And they'll go, Oh, this is just garbage. You know? So I don't, I don't, I don't want to do things like that. So as long as it's still like fun for me and I'm having a good time and uh, people seem to be enjoying it, then I'll keep making them. Uh, but the yeah, moment, you know, the moment that's going, oh, hands off. It's, you know, it's so, it's really nice. It's, I don't know. I, I love that about Planet X and, and especially now that, you know, I've met you and talked to you and stuff, you seem like such a genuine person. And it, it really is true. Like is if you, you can tell when someone is just making something at some supplement for this or something for that, or this is popular. So I'm going to do that. And then you can tell when someone's heart is really into what they're doing. And you don't really get things like big eyed chungus, you know, from someone who's just making stuff just to, to, to get a buck. And that's really awesome. Like I said, you know, throughout a lot of the content, it's so evident that you love what you're making and what you're doing and having fun doing it. And it's, it's really enjoyable. It makes it really fun to read, really easy to support, you know? So I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm really glad that you got to come on the show. And I just want to say that uh, you will have a forever supporter here on the show and, and, and so much just because of like what you just said, just that it's, it's, it's so clear that your heart is into it and your, and your mind's into it and it's in the right spot to just make cool stuff for, for people that, you know, that you love and for people that, uh, that love the kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, 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 it's great. So. That's very, very kind of you to say, like, that's, that's a way better compliment to me than, uh, than just about anything else. <laughs> to be honest with you, that, that that's great. It made my day. Glad and and listen, hey, any time that you have a project coming out in the future, you let us know because I will absolutely be talking about it here on the podcast. You know, like like we said, everything you've done has been really fantastic. This project that you're doing right now with Laws is really fantastic, and and I'm excited for the next thing that comes through. So, um, you know, if you're listening to us here on the pod, plan to hear some Planet X stuff going forward, and you'll probably see some played here on the show at some point sooner than later too. So we'll see how that goes. Right on. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, listen, Levi, I super appreciate you coming on the show. Um, is there anything else about the Kickstarter, anything else you want to just make sure that we get to before we go? Or um, or uh, or did we hit everything that we need to? I think we hit everything we need to. I just, I, again, I really want to um, say, really want to point out, really, that this was this latest Kickstarter, the Closet of the Eye Wizard. This really is the baby of, of, of laws. And without him, it wouldn't exist. Uh, without him this collaboration of incredible artists and, and creators would never have been gathered. Um, I'm just very fortunate that he chose me to be the person to publish it and to hand it, you know, hand his baby over to. So um, thank you, Laz. And thank you to all the collaborators that, um, that put their hard work into the, the book. Yeah, I, like I said, I can't wait for that project. So uh, as far as, you know, we've talked about a lot of your stuff, where can people actually find all of your, the stuff that you've put out? So all my stuff is on Exalted Funeral. So if you just go to Exalted Funeral and in the search bar at the top, you just write in Planet X Games or even just Planet X, uh, all my stuff will come up. And not just or and, you know not, not just the stuff that that I do. If you put in my name, Levi Combs, you'll see some other stuff that I've done. Um, most recently, I did a project for them called uh, the Vorpal Almanac that I um, that I uh, did with a very talented artist from New Jersey, uh, Sally Canarino. Um, just a a fun, super fun project, and then you know, Exalted gave it the gave it the, the a really golden touch to it. The book looks fantastic. There's a gold foil cover, you know. There's a sweet you know bookmark, the whole nine yards. So like, it's it's a really nice, nicely presented product, and we had a good time doing it. So, um, yeah, Exalted Funeral Man. You can find me on uh, Instagram at uh, It Came From Beyond Planet X. I'm still lingering on Twitter. Uh, as it uh, slowly dies and 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 falls into uh, falls into the sea piece by piece, but uh, you can find me there at Planet X Games Co. Like company, and then um, Levi Combs on Blue Sky, and then uh, I want to say just Planet X Games on Facebook. So there you go. 
All right, listen, like we said, check out all of the stuff that he just said. Definitely follow the Instagram. It is a trip every single day. Um, you'll have fun uh, following along with that. And, uh, and and we didn't even get to talk about the Vorp Lomanac, but goddamn, that's a good looking book. So um, I can't wait till that comes in the mail. I'm very excited Thanks, for dude. that. But once again, seriously, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And, um, and, and for everyone listening, if it's before the 5th, uh, go back, uh, Closet of the Eye Wizard, and if it's after, you better hope you get a copy because this is not one you're going to want to miss. So thank you all so much for being here. Once again, Levi, thank you so much. And um, Thanks, everyone out there listening, have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.